Hey yo, hey yo, and welcome to a new episode, or I wouldn't even call it an episode, a new edition of the Take One Spoiler Cast. And this one I'm going to be talking about Transformers The Last Night. Now I know I said in my non-spoiler review, which is up right now, if you haven't seen that movie, um, go ahead and check out my non-spoiler review and uh, watch the film and then come back to the spoiler review. But, like I said up in that one, uh, I was done talking about this piece of shit. Yeah, I really, I really didn't realize that I would have to then, you know, do a spoiler review. But, in any case, I'm talking movies and that's something that I love doing. So, here we are. And... Just to put this out there, um, anybody that is listening to this and wanting to get a review of this movie, a non-spoiler review, check out my other review. Because this is, like I said, a spoiler review. It will be a spoiler-filled review. I will be reviewing things about this movie that will be considered as spoiler, as detailed in the title of a Take One Spoiler cast. So, if you haven't seen this movie, this is your last chance to leave this podcast before this movie gets spoiled for you. And if you just don't care, and you just want to hear it, continue listening. If you, you know, you've seen it, and you want to continue listening, go ahead. Because I will start talking about the movie now. Okay, so, it's um, it's a lot of stuff that I had said up in the movie. It's like, um, well, up in the movie review. It is kind of pre- pretty lengthy. It's like seven minutes and so. Um, I'm going to get better at that. I'm going to get better at like, uh, shortening my reviews and stuff like that. But, uh, that's all for another thing. Um, basically I have a lot to say about this movie. A lot. Now it's been, um, a good little minute since I've seen the movie because like, this is like, uh, this is going to, this is a late review being put up for this movie, but I do still have my notes and I still remember a lot from the movie. And this movie was very disappointing. Very, very, very disappointing. I went into this movie. um, See, I I didn't, I don't bash these films like a lot of other people did. A lot of people liked the first film. I really wasn't really in too particular about the first film. I liked the second film better than the first film. A lot of people didn't like the second film. You know, it's just the third film was okay. A lot of people like it, a lot of people hate it. And you know, just basically just what I'm getting at, a lot of people just kind of like don't like these films. A lot of the, like the movie, uh, you know, reviewers or critics or whatever, they don't like these films. I didn't, I, I, you know, they never really bothered me like that. You know, back before I really actually critiqued movies, I really didn't look at too much of these movies like that. You know, I just really didn't care for it. I'd go see it watch it, you know, whatever, and then after that, you know, like, okay, cool, this and that, that was a good movie, and then going about my week, you know, it wasn't nothing that actually stuck with me, as in like, oh, this movie had so many problems, like, you know, like, certain movies do nowadays, because I actually critique movies as I see them, you know, whether it's for, like, you know, good or bad, or whatever the heck, so, going into this film, this is like the first actual Transformers film that I went into actually to critique it and not and I'm not I ain't gonna say like critique it in the sense of like I went in and expecting it to be bad I went into this movie expecting to hopefully hopefully come out liking the movie because the trailers were awesome the trailers was so crazy so I was like yo this movie like it's about to be dope as fuck it looked like it's about to be like the best thing that's coming out this year, or at least one of the top 10 best movies, and looking at the trailer, man, it was a good cut together trailer, like, anybody would think that, you know, just based off on how the trailer looked, but going into this movie, it was like, it started to go downhill, um, usually, like, a lot of times, I'm not even gonna front, and it doesn't affect my review because I do have, like, a good sense of, like, uh, how I do these reviews. When I go into movies, uh, a lot of times I am seeing them at night. I work crazy hours and stuff like that. So, by the time I get to see certain movies, like, I'm kind of, like, sleepy. 
but it's not like I fall asleep for like 10, 15 minutes and then wake up in a movie, this and that, and then I do a review because that would be like irresponsible. I want to have a good, clear, uh, you know, vision or memory of like what I just seen. And so a lot of times I'll be sleepy, you know, whatever. I'll be trying my best to stay up and I do a good job of it. You know, I'll just be sleepy going towards the beginning of the movie and then going towards the end, you know, I start to wake up. You know, and so, you know, it that's basically how I usually go. With this movie, I was woke. I was cool, you know, and then as the movie progressed, I started to get tired and sleepy. And it just, it got to the point where, like, I just didn't care. And so, um, I mean, I know I'm rambling, but I just wanted to get that out of my chest. That just shows you how, like, bored I got with this movie. That's one thing, like, I just want to start off with the length. Like, the length is just so crazy. Like, it literally should have been shorter. Majority of this film, like I said up in my um, non-spoiler review, is that this movie would have benefited from being shorter. Two hours at the most. This movie should have been like an hour 40, hour 30, or whatever. It shouldn't have been that long. Especially for how it was advertised with Optimus Prime not actually really turning, really. You know, I mean, he did for a little bit, like literally one two percent of the movie that's how much he turned evil it was advertised as something so major something so big and epic but then when you see the movie it's minor like that's so it's just that was so disappointing for it. like because when you look at the trailers like that's what you go in for They're like oh my god you know optimus prime he gonna turn on his uh autobots and blah blah and then, you know, it just, it doesn't have a good payoff. You're not satisfied by the end of it. And it just, everything corresponds. I know I said I was going to start off with the length and going with this. But at the same time, it was like just getting to that part. You know, you start off with Optimus Prime and um, just, well, no, nah, basically you just start off with the film. It's, it's just like a regular Transformer film. It just has that regular Transformers feel to it. And, you know, you got Mark Wahlberg up in there. You got Little Girl and all this stuff. And it just, I don't know. It, it's, it's so weird. Matter of fact, like, when you go into the movie, I, I, I guess they explained it to me. Like, I didn't care to really remember. But it was like, they went into this movie. And you got kind of a post-apocalyptic feel to it. But it's not. Just what, I don't know. I guess it was in certain parts. But it's like, it was just, that was just kind of confusing. I mean, not too, too confusing, but it was just, it, it just kind of, it stood out a lot. Because, like, Mark Wahlberg, he walks around and he looks like a guy that's in a post-apocalyptic, you know, world. Even like the little girl. But yet, at the same time, no, the world is like how it is now. I mean, of course, it's further in technology because it's a movie, but in the same sense, it's basically the world as we know it now. It's not a post-apocalypse. It's... If anything, it's a pre-apocalypse. Anyway, but it, it, it was just, ugh. But yeah, it's just like you go on this journey with Mark Wahlberg and the little girl and this and that. And it's just, it, you really don't see Optimus throughout the whole film. And I feel like the majority of the film was just a regular Transformers film. It, it kind of seemed like the whole Optimus Prime thing, even though they did you know, go toward it in the last film. It, it felt like something that was shoehorned in the movie. That's basically what it felt like. Just something that was shoehorned at the last minute. And then they just put it at the end and then that was, you know, called it a day. That's basically what it felt like. Even though it was hinted at in the last film, it, 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 just, it seemed like a shoehorned thing. And it's like, why should it have took so long? Like, it literally, that should have happened if at the most... In the second half. And then Optimus Prime, I say, should have turned back good in the third half. Or in the third act. That's basically what it should have been. But it wasn't. It was just, Optimus Prime was just, he, he was persuaded. And then it was like, oh, I came to my senses. Come on, let's fight on, let's fight alongside each other again. It's like, uh. and then it was just so stupid with the whole thing of the reason why he turned it because he heard Bumblebee's voice. It was just, oh my God, that was, that was God awful. But yeah, like the length, it gets to you, you know, it's, it's kind of like, I guess you could say, um, 
I felt the same way about this movie, the way I felt about the other film. Not not as far as like I thought it was garbage or anything, but as far as the length. It was like you you enjoying the film. You enjoying the film and you just keep going, you're going, you're going, you're going. And it gets to a certain point and then you're like, Oh, what well, this movie looks like is about to end, you know, this and that. And in the last film I thought about that. Because, you know, in the trailer for the last film, The Age of Extinction, you see the um Dinobots. So I'm watching the film. And I'm like, okay, this movie about to end. And then I realized, huh, they haven't showed the Dinobots yet. So we got a little bit more to go. And I think at that point, I needed to really pee. And I didn't want to leave and miss anything. So I'm sitting there trying to hold my um, pee. And I'm sitting, and I'm trying to fi fi like finish out the rest of the movie and all this stuff. So I was, I was being tortured by just needing to pee and not wanting to go to the bathroom, which I should have. And just wanting to see this film that it was just taking so damn long. And it, it just, uh, and, it, and this movie was the same way. It was like you start to kind of enjoy it for a while. Because you enjoy the action and the visuals and stuff like that. But then you start to realize like, hold on. We haven't really seen Optimus Prime yet. Like, it, he's, he's still not on Earth. You start to realize that. And you're like, oh, Lord. And I'm just thinking, like, when I thought about that, I'm like, man, he's going to appear at the last, on, in, at the last act. That's where he's going to come. And I was right. And it was just, oh, just, oh, man, they they should have did better. This, this is, they, they literally had potential to do something great with this film. They could have made Optimus Prime just a badass villain badass villain and he was been doing it for the right reasons for the right reasons but I, mean, I wouldn't even say the right reasons but he had good reasons for doing it for turning on like the earth and stuff like that he had a good reason so i don't understand why they didn't just go full-fledged with that and made that like half the movie it was just that was that was really disappointing to that movie that was really disappointing um uh, what else can I get going? Um, I'm gonna, yeah, okay, so I'm going to talk about the Knights at the beginning of the film. Like, in the trailer, you hear all the stuff about, yeah, Transformers, you know, they changed this, they changed this in the past and past and blah, blah, and you hear all this stuff about the past and, you know, just, just crazy, just the marketing and advertisements for this film before it even came out. You hear all the stuff that it has to do with just past things and, you know, just history and that really don't play a major part. Like the whole Knights, t I ain't gonna say Knights Templar, but um, the whole King Arthur and the Round Table and the Knights at the Round Table aspect of it, that only happened at the beginning. That's that's it, that's at the beginning. It has ties to it throughout the whole movie, but it's not something that was really prevalent, prevalent throughout the whole film. And then all the other stuff was just mentioned, like this is Transformers been here all this year, all these years, and blah blah blah, and all this stuff. And I, I, I don't remember too much of the movies back then, but I don't know. I think the continuity is just destroyed. It's kind of like the X Men films. But yeah, that, and then it was goofy too. So it was like oh, the humor again. Well, the humor just started with there, but. From then on, the humor doesn't get any better. It just, it, it gets, I ain't gonna say worse, but it just doesn't get anywhere. It just, it, it just is. That's what it, that's what it is, whatever. Uh, and matter of fact, yeah, it just, oh. I wasn't gonna go back to the Optimus Prime thing, because I, I think I mentioned that. Yeah, I already mentioned that up in the, uh, in the non-spoiler. So, uh, what's next on my notes? Um. Uh, I hear wrote down something I don't know what it means. I have to rewatch the movie again. Maybe I don't know because I don't want to watch that shit. Uh, basically, kind of like the best action parts were the last act, and now and, and sadly that was the part that I was very just like tired on. Like I was at that point, I was just waiting for the movie to end. I I didn't care too much for it. It was like, I was just, oh, I was just there, like, come on, man, movie in, kill whoever they need to kill, destroy whatever they need to destroy, and let's just call it a day. 
and it's, it's just so freaking crazy, uh, I don't know, um, I, I just didn't like it, um, uh, another thing that I had touched on up in the non-spoiler review was the ditching of characters. The little girl that has a whole trailer to herself, which is the second uh, Transformers trailer. She has the whole commercial to herself, like, this is this is my reality or whatever she says up in there. But she's prominent throughout the whole trailer. She appears in the first act disappears in the second act and come back in the third act and really has no purpose for the third act it is like i don't know why they did this just took characters put them in their movie make them disappear for a little bit because like in a sense i guess you could say like i know i said up in the non-spoiler review uh that this movie seemed like two different movies in a sense, when you look at just a regular Transformer movie, it was just the whatever. It was just like a regular movie. And then the whole Optimus Prime thing, that was the movie that we actually paid to go see. It was the third act. That's the actual movie that we paid our money, our hard-earned money to go see. And that's what it was. Uh, this movie, in a sense, when you look at it differently, in another sense... It seemed like three movies. You have the first act, which is the little girl and Mark Wahlberg making a connection and stuff like that. Because he doesn't have his daughter around. So I guess he is kind of like taking care of her or, you know, just being around her as like a daughter figure. Um, and so that's kind of like one movie. And then the second movie is when she disappears out the picture. And then he meets the other girl and they trying to figure out this whole knights thing and you know the, the 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 emblem and stuff like that and mark Wahlberg being the last night which i'm gonna get on to a little in a little bit and that's its own little movie and then it goes to the movie that we pay to see so it, in this in one sense it, it seemed like two different movies in another sense it seemed like three different movies because the three different acts are totally different from each other but yeah, I mean, it's just I don't understand why they gave so much time to her in the trailer and made her seem like she was going to be a have a big big role up in the movie and it was just kind of like a movie to introduce her. And I don't know if she's going to be in the next film they have the, which they more than likely are going to, but I don't know if they're going to have her in the next uh Transformers film cuz damn sure not going to have her in the Bumblebee film cuz that's going to take place I think in the 80s or I, I don't know, whatever. But uh, I don't know if she's going to be in another film. So I don't know why they took the time out to introduce her and try and get us to, you know, get familiar with her. And you, you just kind of like ditch her and then give, make her useless in the third act. She just kind of appears and then disappears because things get crazy. It's, I don't understand it. I really don't. Oh, my head is hurting right now. I'm thinking about this movie a little bit too much. But yeah, I just did not understand why she... If they were going to do that, why have her in the film? Why have her? You know? You could have just did easily. You could have just made it better. With just making the whole movie the second and third act. And just splitting it. Making his turn longer. And, you know? And making like the first introduction to the female of the um, movie... Which is old girl. And I don't know. Like to me that just kind of stood out. Like I don't know if it stood out to anybody else. That it was just kind of weird. Seeing the little girl. I don't know her now. I think it's like Isabel or something like that. Izzy. I don't know. Because I know her character name and her real name are similar. So it's something like that. Izzy, Isabel, Isabella. Something like that. But yeah she. Uh, I mean as far as that she did good. She did good. But for some reason, it seemed like they was trying to sexualize her. I don't know if anybody else noticed that. But that's just what it seemed like to me. Even up in the trailers and just watching the movie, it just seemed like they just not really over-sexualized her, but they just tried to sexualize her, you know, in a certain way. Because in, in a sense, she... I, I don't, it's, it's so crazy because I look at the old Transformers films. One through three. Or is it one through three? I think it's... Uh, I wouldn't say the ones that Megan Fox is in. It seemed like Michael Bay is trying to find another chick that looks like Megan Fox. If that makes any sense. 
because like yeah up in the first two matter of fact yeah up in the first two because Shia LaBeouf was like oh in the first three so in the first two you got Megan Fox or whatever and then after that he finds another chick that don't really look like her but then like you know he's trying to find this like sex I guess you could say this like sexy girl to have up in the movie or sexy woman to have up in the movie and this movie is like the little girl in the sense she kind of symbol not symbolized but like she has similarities in a sense but then the other girl that mark Wahlberg is falling for or you know they have the cat and mouse thing or whatever they playing you know cat and mouse whatever it's like she kind of look like megan fox but i mean it seemed like before when like the other girl like the older woman she wasn't in the picture it seemed like they was just really trying to sexualize the little girl and i i don't know i, I just felt that that was weird they they did make that choice of decision, but I mean I don't know. Maybe I'm the only person that noticed that. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm just tripping. I don't know, but that was just something that stood out to me. And it would just seem like as soon as like she got out the picture, you get the older woman. So I don't know. That was just something that just seemed odd to me. I mean, let me know if you thought the same thing or whatever. Um, what else can I talk about? What else can I talk about in my spoiler review? My, my, my spoiler review. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, what I was going to get at before, Mark Wahlberg is the last night. So forget all the promotional posters of, uh, you know, Optimus Prime, you know, standing with a sword like a knight would. So you got, you know, you're thinking that, like, you know, uh, Optimus Prime is the last night, you know. No, Mark Wahlberg uh, is the last night. So that was miss miss marketing, and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this whole miss marketing thing in some video. I don't know if it's gonna be on a podcast. I don't know if it's gonna be on the quick takes. More than likely, it's gonna be on a podcast or something. But I need to address this because this movie, along with like like other movies I've seen this year and just movies I've seen before that the trailers will give you one thing, even just like the promotion, the marketing and the posters and stuff will give you one thing. But when you see the movie, you get a totally different thing. And that's one thing. And I get like a lot of it is to bring the people in, like, give me your money. We, this is why you. This is why this movie is good. Bring, give me your money. Oh, we got your money. Oh, you didn't like what you uh, paid for. Oh well, you gave me your money anyway. You know, and I get that's the whole idea behind it. I get it. That's the whole idea behind it. But it just sucks that it has to be that way because this promotional poster. Well, promotional posters show that you know, freaking Optimus Prime. He has a freaking sword. It's like, why does he have a sword? Why? I mean, he is a freaking robot who has guns that shoot guns. Why does he hold a sword? So you got all these promotional posters with him holding a sword, thinking like, oh, Optimus Prime, he's the last, like, Prime. He's the last knight or whatever the heck. You know, you put your, you put, like, two and two together or what you think two and two is. You know, you put them together. You know, all that stuff. And it's like, you look at it and... Mark Wahlberg is it so why are you miss marketing like I don't know like I don't know if that was like maybe just one thing they wanted to make it like a twist but it was just why I don't understand I really don't it was just that I guess that has to do with the whole miss marketing thing like that's something that they literally could have put up in the trailers and I don't think it would have took away from the movie at all I don't think it would have but I think they did make a mistake by making him the last night. Maybe they could have changed the story around to where it's like Optimus Prime is the last night. I, I'm just thinking about so many possibilities. I am. I'm really am. These movies are just, oh, just God, man. It was just crazy. Uh, I can tell right now that this spoiler review is going to go on for a little bit longer than what I would like it. But I still have a few more things to talk about. But... This movie, I'm going to be doing some videos. Hopefully, I can get at least two done by the end of this year. They're going to be called Take One Rewrites. I already have one up on my channel. It's from uh, Fantastic Four, the 2014 version. And, yeah, I'm going to be doing that. 
to more than likely this film. Because I could see a whole bunch of potential that Michael Bay did not go after. And uh, it just needs to be done. It really does. I don't know when I'm going to have it out, when I'm going to do it. But it needs to be done. So, uh, yeah, let me move on. Um, And one thing that if you... One thing I had said about the continuity. If you've seen the last film, Megatron consciousness was put into Galvatron. Which was a manufactured, uh, uh, manufactured transformer that you know the government made. He didn't trans back. He didn't turn back into Megatron. He didn't. He didn't turn back into Megatron at the end of the film. He was still Galvatron, but in this film, he's Megatron again. It doesn't explain it. Doesn't acknowledge that he was Galvatron. He's just Megatron again. What happened? I don't understand what, like, how. And the, and, the, and the fucked up thing about it is that Michael Bay is the one who directed and written all of these Transformers films. Now, I may be off. He may have had some help with the Transformers films as far as writing it, or somebody else wrote this one. I don't give a fuck. Michael Bay had everything to do with it. He has a lot of pull, he has a lot of just say so in these films because he's bringing in so much money to the company and how are you gonna fuck up your own movie how how i guess you could say that to paul ws anderson i believe that's the guy that did resident evil films because that last fucking shit was just but in a sense it's like how do you mess up your own property how do you mess up the continuity i can get that you know uh, I don't know, you forget certain things, but this is the last film. How do you forget that? You have to explain certain things. Like I, I, I was just, oh my God. And then it just, along with that, like I said, it was just, it was certain characters that were introduced and ditched. Some of the characters that were introduced and ditched and not even came back to was the henchman of Megatron. So they had this part of the movie where it didn't make any goddamn sense where Megatron is pleading with the government we're not pleading with them we're trying to negotiate with the government to get certain um Decepticons released why don't have no fucking clue why the government would even negotiate with Megatron to let certain Decepticons free why it's like that's like a criminal negotiating with a prison to get other criminals released yeah you won't let the bad ones the real 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 crazy bad ones go but you'll let the little ones you know the, the little thieves and stuff and maybe if somebody stabbed somebody or attempted murder you know stabbed somebody or shot somebody but didn't kill them or whatever you know you know you gonna let them go we negotiated something with them like no that whole Megatron did not need to be in this movie. It's sad what they're doing with him. I I hate that they are just basically making him like a secondary like uh bad villain. But he he has a, such a small part in this movie that it doesn't even make any sense why is he in this movie. He has nothing to do with the plot at all. Has nothing to do with you know just what Optimus Prime is doing. He's just there. He does some stuff, and then that's it. That's that's just that's just it. And like, yeah. Um. And then he has he gets this crew, and what's crazy is that they introduce them, like they literally show like oh Shogun, and then they have this like freeze frame where they show like the Shogun. And it ain't one of the characters, but I'm just throwing out a name. Like they got Shogun just right there, and then they got the name right there just in freeze frame. And then you know you show a little bit of what he does or how he acts, his personality. And then they, okay, well, can I get a showstopper? You know, this and that. And then we're like, okay, well, we can let a showstopper go. And then it does the same thing. And then, you know, it, it's like every time they say a, he asks for a different person, they'll show their personality, what type of Decepticon they are, and, and show the name and all that stuff. 
And I'm like, why are they doing this? And then it gets to the point where they start getting to this fight with the Autobots and they get destroyed. Like they literally get destroyed. They get killed. What what was the point of him getting them out just to get destroyed? Okay, my head is hurting. This review has my head hurting. Um Yeah, and I'm oh my gosh. I think that's it. Um just the last act I'm gonna just finish it off like the last act of this movie is kinda like the better of the act. Because it actually is what we saw up in the trailer. It has everything that we saw up in the trailer. Like I said, I mean, I ain't even gonna front. Like, I did enjoy this movie until a certain point. When I realized that Optimus Prime wasn't gonna appear into the third act, that's when I started to check out. That's when I really did start to check out. It was just, it, it wasn't even no point of just actually, like, yo, this movie is gonna get better. No, it's just... Uh, I mean, whatever. If you like it, you liked it. If you didn't, hell, more power to you. <laughs> I mean, it's just this. This is the just. This was just disappointing. Hopefully, Michael Bay follows on with his word with him saying that he's not going to direct the next Transformers film. And I'm not talking about the Bumblebee film. I'm talking about the Transformers film. Hopefully, he does that and gives somebody else the reins. And when they do, hopefully, they do a better job. Cause this was just trash. This is, and I'm I'm thinking about like, damn, does this movie even really deserve a four out of ten on my rating? I'm really I'm really kind of like thinking about that. Does it really deserve a four? But you know, despite how I hated this movie, it does have a lot of redeeming qualities. A lot of things that could have been done but didn't just basically a lot of potential and that's why yeah i'm gonna eventually do a take one rewrites on this movie and this is not something that i've thought about before as i'm as i'm talking about this stuff in this spoiler review it popped in my head it's a lot of stuff in this movie that is good that could have been used they have a lot of potential but just wasn't met it just wasn't just it just wasn't used it, it was just is oh my god Anyway, that concludes this Take One spoiler cast of the movie Transformers The Last Night and hopefully the last time Michael Bay freaking writes or directs one of these damn films. Um, and, um, this is more than likely my last time to talk about this until the Take One rewrites whenever I do it. I'm not saying it's going to be done within the next week. It may not even be done this year, but I'm going to do it sometime. But, um, yeah, so, uh, you guys like this video, hit the like button, uh, subscribe to my channel and all that stuff and, uh, stay tuned to everything else I got going on and I will catch you guys next time on the next Take One Spoiler Cast. Peace.